We're back in business. Welcome to Top Chef Fantasy League. This is take two. We forgot to hit record the first time around. <laughs> I'm your host and commissioner, Mike Cavallon. This is Ify Wadiwe. This is Sierra Cotto. Sierra, do you want to talk quickly? Okay, oh, yes. This is so stupid because we have to do everything we yeah, just said over the last 10 minutes I know, yeah. again. Sierra, it's okay. It's a good redo. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah now we have I, uh, practice. Because I, I realize also, okay, this is fun. Okay, so I, uh, yeah, I have a special coming out, comedy special coming out tomorrow. It's uh, April 2nd, Tuesday, uh, on demand. And you can go to my Instagram, which oh. is at Sierra Cotto, uh, S-I-E-R-R-A-K-A-T-O-W. And I have the link in bio to do a little, uh, do a little pre-order or order. A pre-order. Oh, okay. It's called Funt. Pre-order yes. as in um, physical media? Are you doing like vinyls? Oh, that would be cool. No, it, it's on demand. So it's just your digital, digital fun times. Love but, right, you nice. know, this is this is what digital we're doing. Digital fun times. Oh. Ooh. There it is. Hey. Well, see, that's why a second take is good because I wanted to make that joke last time when Sierra said it was fun uh-huh. and I didn't. I, I, I backed out. And then now, I stole it. Now stole you, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you didn't steal yeah. it. You didn't steal it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks you, so you much. Had it. it came to you naturally. All right. Beautiful. Um, another small update for us. Very exciting. More and more of the chefs are starting to follow us on Instagram. Yes. Which is yes. terrifying. Scary, terrifying. Scary, scary. Yeah, yeah. We have to, you know, I, I went back and watched, you know, some of our clips after. Like, <laughs> Just to make sure we didn't yeah, yeah. Say, say anything incendiary. Which, which, honestly, I think the follows are proof that we're not being assholes. Yeah. But, you know, I still wanted to be like, what's it? And I like that, you know, and we did this naturally before before. Before we even thought the chefs would follow us, we do a good job of like, you know, having our little jokey jokes and saying what we say, and then all very quickly being like, but you these are amazing chefs. We could never we do what never, you do. You yeah. know, yeah. We, as yeah. as Joe Flam says in this episode, yes. there are no bad chefs in this room. Yes. There's only we have bad dishes, we have bad days, but no bad chefs. Yes. Beautifully put. Yes, and if you want to invite us to your restaurants, slide in the DMs. We will be there. We'll be we'll, there. We'll do an episode from there. This is a mobile setup. We can yeah, do this anywhere. Mobile setup, yeah. Just give us some chairs. Honestly, don't give us chairs. Don't go, we'll, we'll do it standing. We'll, we'll, we'll sit on the, the floor. Yeah. Yeah. We can do yeah. a walk-in. Oh, yeah. We're happy wherever. Put us in the back of the kitchen. Yeah. Just have, like, the flames going off behind us. That'd be a <laughs> yeah. dynamic episode. And keep us on our toes. Yeah. yeah. Behind. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah. We know the terms. Um... Speaking of Joe Flam, I think he came across as really just so nice in this episode. Yes. Not that I never thought he wasn't nice, but like he, I feel like he like really went toe to toe with Tom and like stuck up for the chefs. Yeah. Um, Alicia talked about how she didn't go to culinary school, but when she worked for Joe Flam, he was one of the only people to tell her, "Yeah, you don't need to go. You're fine." Yes. And I related to that as like a comedian who never went to college, even though it is kind of different because you don't need to go to college for yeah. comedy. But, you know, as you know, you see all, a lot of these comedy writers who have these Harvard connections and, you know, I'm just doing it from the street. So me. So I like to imagine that like uh, Alicia is the culinary iffy you know? <laughs> uh, and I'm the comedy Amazing. Alicia. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I watched season 15 of uh, Joe Flam's Joe Flam winning season, season yeah. back yes. in the day, and it was great to see him back again. Hasn't aged a day. You think so? <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I haven't compared. Compa- <laughs> that sounded meaner than I meant. Now, what I, you're right, now I am self-conscious. Yeah. I'm like, what if, what if Joe Flam us? listens to this? No, I'm not saying he um, looks like no, I, bad. I'm just like, he does look a little older. Yeah, I'm, you know I'm sure I mean? he has. I haven't watched that season in a while. So, <laughs> so you're just going off I the didn't, dome. Yeah, off I just, I just from, you know, wanting to throw something out there. I'm like, maybe Flam, Flam looking He looks glam. good. I'll, yeah. I, I'll cap it at just, he looks good. Yeah. yeah nice. Flamorous, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank um, you. This episode doesn't feel as long to me as last week's did. I'll say that about the new runtime. Oh, yeah. Once you add the quick fire back in, it all kind of flowed. Yeah. I, I, and also I think it being a team challenge and having the coursing out kind of made it like skip along because you got like, bam, here's the dish. You get some thoughts. You're already onto the next dish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that kind of, I think also made it feel very like quick. Yeah. Seven yeah. course meal is good for editing. Cause you yeah. can just, oh, here's gosh. the next one. Here's the next one. Yeah. And there's so, there are so many chefs. It's still the beginning of the season. So they just keep, there's so much to pack in. It feels like you're just fully, yeah, I got to pay attention. Oh, they're moving yeah. on to the next dish. So oh, speaking yeah. of so much to pack in the big thing that we got to talk about this week is last chance kitchen. Cause oh, huge yeah. twist. <gasps> but we'll talk about that later. Cause last chance kitchen comes after the episodes. So let's dive yes. in. Yes. By the way, this episode is brought to you by Miller high life. If you brought us some wonderful Milwaukee beer, the champagne of beers to drink. Yes, that's why we're drinking it out of coupe glasses. And I will say, it does make it taste better. I 
this, this is take two, so I've already finished <laughs> my my first. Oh, thank you so We're gonna much. Refill yeah, refill. Refill. There refill. we go. Good thing. Yep. But it's all about. And I gotta say, this was my first beer that I ever had. Uh, <laughs> Today, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today. yeah, yeah ever. Yeah. yeah. No, in high school, Will Martinez. Uh, maybe you know. Well, you know, statue of limitations over. Also, you were a teen too. Uh, but yeah, I, he was like, if you want to get on varsity. You have to kill this 40 ounce and go to practice. And it was the Miller High Life. And I remember reading it was the champagne of beer. I was like, this doesn't taste like champagne. But also in. You had no reference yeah, exactly, to what champagne no, exactly. yeah, But in my head, I was like, this is no it. way. Right. But now I'm like, actually, I get it. It's, it's a fine, yeah. drinkable yeah. beer. I really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, the coupe glass really um, behooves it. You know yeah. what I mean? Ooh, yeah. You understand Elevated. why they're. Yeah. In more ways than one. Up on yeah. The yeah, okay. Here we go. Okay. The quick fire for this episode is a hops challenge, Ooh. or as Kevin calls it, an oops challenge. Oops. oops. I love a charming French accent. Yeah. Oops. Uh, the prize is $5,000, sponsored by the Wells Fargo Active Cash Credit Card. Mm. I was thinking about this. Top Chef is a very sponsor-heavy show. Yes. Sure. And I don't know how to assign points to a sponsorship, but I feel like maybe it's a drinking game. Oh, yeah. Where it's like anytime they drop a a heavy handed sponsorship. Take a shot. You got to take a shot. Take a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It it is interesting because, like, they, I feel like some shows try and be covert about it and they're like, nah, this this is it. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure it's one why Top Chef has been on for as long as it is. Because they can afford to. Oh, yeah. I, for the price for the spot of being the blank, yeah, whatever, whatever challenge, yeah, is probably so high. Yeah, yeah, I'm and sorry. hey, look, it works. You know, we bought this. We're drinking. Yeah. I I had Saratoga last week. I yeah. mean, I, I anytime... I'm a Wells Fargo member. I mean, oh, it was wow. before me watching <laughs> Top Chef, but I'm gonna say still, still. maybe still. not. Yeah, maybe, I, I know, maybe not. I yeah. really want to buy a BMW X5. Yeah, <laughs> advertising works, folks. Oh my yeah. god, Whole Foods. Oh. <laughs> I shop at yeah. Whole Foods all the time. <laughs> yes, and I really want to go to Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, to visit the the caves, the Miller oh, yeah. High Life caves. Uh, okay, in the quick fire, the least favorite dishes we have Kenny with his undercooked faro again. Oh. Kenny on the bottom, iffy as Kenny's team captain. You got to tell me what's in this player's head. Yeah, Kenny. It seems like he's getting his footing, but what I do appreciate about Kenny is he's still taking big swings. He's trying to do interesting things. He hasn't quite hit a stride and did. Like something eye catching that makes him stand out, much like other people will talk about in this episode. But I do think he's due for a standout episode. I think he's going to be one of the ones who really kind of has an episode where they knock it out of the park. And that is kind of what I'm waiting for at this point. They're definitely giving him um, like the charm edit right now. So yes. it's going to feel good when he finally wins. Oh, yeah. he, this week he had his little like, I had to tweak. I mean, twerk. And everyone laughed. It's so oh, yeah. charming. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, you know, I, I laughed in the preview and they brought it back in the real one. I was like... Yeah. Sing it live, still laughed. Still funny. Yeah, because they still threw in the AO, and it I was, was like, shocking. I was glad. Because, you know, we, I, did, I did not expect to hear an AO. He doesn't a, look like an AO kind of guy. Yeah, but I'm glad uh, that he did hit me one. I was like, I'm glad I picked you. We found each other. <laughs> Amazing. You found love Fate. in a hopeless yeah. place. Yes. <laughs> uh, second least favorite dish, Danny, who tried to steep his hops like tea, but it, it ended up too bitter, and he tried to say, for the second week in a row, he kind of gets into the weeds in the middle of the challenge and then has to struggle to save it. Is this, sure. as his team captains, does feel like a trend for you? How are you feeling about this? Little, yeah, a little nervous because he's like one of my top guys, right? But I would say, you know, he talked about his OCD and in particular, like he was in a new kitchen. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, where's the paper towels? Like running around. I can imagine that gets in your head Stressful. a lot. And especially him, if he's, you know, particular about where he puts stuff. So, you know, I appreciate A, that he brought that up. He talked about his wife and how she kind of makes fun of him for it, which was cute. And then, yeah, just the idea that like, they're at least going to be in this quick fire kitchen for a while. Presumably and for the rest so, of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, hopefully this is just first quick fire jitters. Mm, okay. I like that. All right. I like we'll that. see. Time will tell. Uh, bringing up the rear in the least favorite dishes in the quick fire, Valentine. Oh. A harbinger of things to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valentine, I think, really had a re- tough episode. Really tough couldn't, episode. Couldn't get it together. And uh, this is this is just kind of like how it goes. Those early episodes, we're weeding them out. Someone's got to go home. Yeah. And, the, and, and I say, well, yet again, not a bad chef in there. But I do think this is a very 
intense setting for a lot of these folks. Oh, and yeah. you're just second guessing, you're you're overthinking, and I think that's definitely what's happening right now. Um, you did get a quarter of a point because he did say that he missed his daughter. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. is cute daughter. Cute daughter. Cute dad. Yeah, cute yeah. Daughter. I think, yeah, he did say he hadn't competed on uh, in cooking show before, so yeah. I'm sure it's like all the things. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's tough to see. And, you know, I feel like there's no reason to dwell on it because we're going to have a chance to talk about oh, it even we, we more. we got a lot more to talk <laughs> sure. about with Valentine. Yeah, a lot, lot more. So let's move on to the top. Our favorite dishes in the quick fire. They picked Laura's rice pudding, which I'll say to me looked so good. Yeah, I yeah. love a rice pudding. Me too. Oh, I love a rice pudding so much. <laughs> and Laura was one of the only people who had cooked with hops before. She said she had opened a beer yeah. restaurant. Yes. She also said her new restaurant only opened five weeks ago. Crazy. Which is cr- to open a restaurant and then immediately be like, I, I got to go on I, Top Chef. I know. I right, know that right. kitchen is like, where, where, where is she? Going? Uh, uh, bomb, no. But hey, like, I think it's, you know, now everybody's finding out about her and her restaurant. I hope now they're reaping the benefits of letting, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. I hope they're rolling in reservations tonight. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you bet. Yeah. Uh, second for favorite dishes, Michelle's grilled steak with a strawberry and hop oh, yeah. sauce, which also mm, looks great. Yes. Roll and Michelle flame. gets to do a grill thing, which we love. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle's uh, always trying to hop on that grill, and I appreciate her for it. Do what you do best. Lean into your strengths. <laughs> yes. Why try and punch out of your weight class? You know? Exactly. She's doing great. Uh, third up, Kevin with his little uh, berries and cream dish, little hop oil on the berries. Looks great. Yeah. Pastry background. Pastry background. Yeah. yeah again, lean into your strengths. Do what you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, Laura ends up winning the quick fire, so she gets points for that. And then we find out that it is a beer episode. So we're moving on to our elimination challenge now which is to, uh, it's a team challenge, and they have to make a progressive menu of elevated bar snacks. And as an added little twist, each team only gets $500. As they keep saying throughout the episode, champagne taste on a beer budget. Yes. They love to layer in that, which was funny. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that was one of... um, Miller High Life's little things where like you can keep saying this right, right. Yeah. as long as you say champagne and beer every yeah. other sentence we're good yeah mm-hmm. well what I love too is that we had the uh, champagne the, the Miller High Life representative also the there first job title was only listed as Miller High Life representative I'm like what does this woman do <laughs> she represents for the company <laughs> She's there to represent. <laughs> she was voted by her constituents at the Miller High Life oh. Corporation to represent. Right, right. But she was doing great because she was she was always dropping a Miller High Life reference. Oh, and she I was, was like, ready. She was like, I know what the secret ingredient is. Oh, yeah, Miller was, High Life. Yeah, I was like, that is a media trained representative. Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are the skills she learned at yeah. Miller if, High Life College. <laughs> Uh, a college that I wish I had gotten uh, into, yeah. but I did yeah. not have the grades. No, Joe Flam would tell you, no need to go to Miller High Life College. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just work hard. Uh, the winner of the Elimination Challenge gets $10,000 courtesy of Miller High Life. Everyone take a shot for that. Yep. Woo. Beautiful. Perfect. So we split off into two teams. The yellow team. I did the math here for you guys. Alicia, Kenny, Savannah, Dan, Rosica, Michelle, and Manny. That is three people on Sierra's team, two people on my team, two people on your team. Yes. The red team consists of Kalina, Amanda, Valentine, Charlie, Laura, Kevin, and Danny. That's only one person for Sierra. That's three for me and three for you. Yes. So we're leaning a little more on the red team here. Yeah. Which does not bode well for us. Uh, yes, not at all. <laughs> Sorry. And, then, and for uh, for a couple reasons, which we'll get into when we get into who wins and who loses. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, before the challenge starts, we get this cute moment where the all the chef testants get to make dinner together in the loft. It's yes, very cute. I loved it so much. But this is where we get sort of one of the big personal story arcs for this this episode is that Dan has Kennedy's disease and at this point has not told the other chefs. Yes. Which I think is a very interesting choice to go in and just be like, I want to try and prove myself. Yeah. I didn't really like Dan before this. But this this really endeared him to me. Yeah, you know what oh, I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was really like. I mean, I think in the in the, even in the quick fire, he was like saying, "Oh, I'm feeling feeling old or something" when he was yeah. talking, yeah. you know. And and I thought that was very, you know, I didn't even think anything of it at the time. But then, yeah, the fact that that's kind of like what he's trying to do, chosen to do, power to him. Obviously, there's more to come. But yeah. yes, uh, Great. yeah. Oh Love yeah, him. I definitely this arc in this episode. And especially looking a little bit at the preview, I was like, oh, this is going to be the thing that yeah. is going to get me... To cry? Re- oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah, like, definitely. Is, I, was, I, was yeah. Like, I was like, okay, that's going to be a mid-season cry. Waiting yeah, for tugging, me. At, yes. tugging at your heart there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. whenever he does get eliminated... 
because I'll say it. I don't think he's going to make it to the top three. And yeah. that's not a knock on his skills. Just yeah, yeah. my gut feeling. Look, okay. we're playing fantasy sports here. Yeah. Whenever he does get eliminated, I will cry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, seated with the judges for the meal, we already talked about Carol Walker, Miller High Life representative. The other one I wanted <laughs> yeah. to bring up, Charlie Barron's The Champagne of Comedians. All right. I have I have Charlie Barron's... Uh, Knowledge. Okay, here um, we go. So in our first episode, I talked about my friend Matt Torkelson. Yes. Shout out, who's a comedian from Wisconsin, and we would go to his uh, small uh, hometown to uh-huh. do comedy. He is open for Charlie Barron's in big Wisconsin theaters. Like, this Charlie guy is like the guy. Here's the thing. I don't doubt that. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not here to knock on Charlie Barron's, like, game recognized game. Comedian, comedian. I'm not here to say you're not funny or anything like that. I'm just like... Is Milwaukee so bereft of other celebrities that it, it would be like if one of us was on the show? Do you know what well, I mean? Well, that's, that's that sentence right there is why I'm excited about it. I was like, when we do, <laughs> when they do Top Chef Downey, California. Oh yes, baby, we are I right can, yeah. there. I'm coming, I'm coming down, and ninety percent of America is going to watch the show and be like, "Who the fuck is sitting <laughs> sure, there next sure. to Tom and Gail?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll say that's the Charlie Barons of Downey, California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, so um, I I just felt like we needed to talk about Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the yellow team. We're, we don't have to talk about every dish, but here are the highlights to me. Rossica clearly gets the dessert. Dan wanted Ooh. the dessert, but nice guy, Midwesterner. Yeah. He says, Rossica, you take the dessert. Uh, yeah, let's like, yeah. You, we really need to emphasize that. That yeah, R- Rossica made a pretty big deal to get the dessert. She was like, assertive like, for it. Yes, and and, and that puts. Her in an interesting position because it's like, if you fuck this up, right? It's you right. gotta like, deliver. You, yeah, yeah, you gotta deliver. And she did. And she did. We'll get to that in a second. Yes. But she did. I liked her little personal story that she told, where she was like, "My parents to renew their green card would come back and bring me pretzels." So I loved pretzels as a kid. I know. You Adorable. Love a, you love a story. Yeah. You love a through line. And 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 that's what M was saying when she was watching. When she was like, "Those always do really well." If yeah. you have, if you thought mm. out and you had a vision, and the judges can tell, yeah. they lean towards you. Yeah. Vision and ability to execute on. Yeah. Yes, like yes, that's clutched. the exact word she used. Yeah, real, which real I would top argue is true of any artist. You know, yeah. I mean? it's like your your ability as a painter is only ranked by like what do you see in your head, and are you able to put that on a, a palette for other people to see? You know yeah, I mean? right. One without the other, nada. Yeah, yeah. yeah, does not an artist make? Or you can work on it, but that's you know. Oh yeah. Um. That being said, Roska's dessert does sound weird. And yeah. Alicia even says Roska's dessert sounds weird. She has <laughs> a mustard sabayon on top, which yeah. mustard, A, mustard and dessert, weird. Yeah. B, I just want to say sabayon is how some people try and say my last name sometimes. <laughs> my last name is Cavalon. People are... Mike Sabayon. Sabayon. <laughs> sabayon. Yeah, well, now you know where they're getting that from. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's, it sounds like a weird dessert. And she almost, there's a little bit of drama because she's like, my uh, my granita isn't freezing. I got to use yes. liquid nitrogen. Uh, so despite it, all of this, she still pulls it out. Sure. Yeah. Em, em got scared because liquid nitrogen, usually sometimes it'll make it rock hard. Yes. Yeah. And so that's too cold. Like, you got to watch out. Yeah. Anything like, frozen dishes, you know, granitas especially, yeah. always seem to be so, you know, Fickle because you kind of have the perfect have to have the perfect temperature, yeah, perfect yeah, texture, yeah. you know. And then you if think it's a about hot day, you're fucked. I know. Yeah. And then you know the travel time between where they're mm-hmm. cooking and the chef's table. Like I can't imagine. And so, in general, like you said, like I personally am not a fan of like liquid nitrogen desserts. Like yeah. there's like the rolled ice cream and yes. stuff like that. And I'm like, it's it's too cold too fast. It it tastes like cold. Do you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Oh, right. I know exactly it numbs your you tongue. Mean. You can't yeah. taste. Though I will say, love Dippin' Dots. We'll die. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, we'll yeah, that's die a, yeah, that's from Dippin', Dippin, Dippin, Dippin Dots. Yeah, that isn't the rolled ice cream. I will say a friend the other day, it's funny that you bring it up, uh, mentioned they're like, yeah, rolled ice cream kind of came and went. Like I felt mm. like it was a big trend. It was and like I, visually appealing. Yeah, but then I, you eat it and you're like, this sucks. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and you remember like those? Yeah, those those kind of fad desserts. They come and yeah. go. I was just oh, talking yeah. about except for Dippin' Dots. <laughs> still here, baby. Yeah. Still, still rocking here it. in every mall. But yes, I I mean, Pinkberry. Do you did you guys? Oh baby, yeah, yeah. When, when, that was coming gone. Yeah, yeah the when, yeah. It, it was so funny too because I think the the thing that really made frozen yogurt blow up was it was this false idea that they're like it's healthy it's, it's oh, healthier yeah, yeah it's healthier yeah. than ice cream and yeah. that's what kind of like pushed it forward and you're putting like fucking graham crackers and, <laughs> yeah. and gummy bears on it yeah. like this is healthy <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, we were wild for that one. We, we, uh, As a society. society. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, oh, there was something I was going to say. Oh, this is just a fun fact I learned recently. Did you know that Dippin' Dots makes most of their money not from ice cream? <gasps> really? They, they almost, they, you can read an article about it. I feel, I feel like I'll find a link. I'll put it in the show yeah. notes. They almost went bankrupt. They got a new CEO. The new CEO was like, the technology to make the ice cream is better than the ice cream. So he started licensing it out to like pharmaceutical companies because that process of taking a liquid and turning it into like little pellets is like really helpful for like transportation and storage and stuff like that. So they make most of their money off of licensing the technology for Dippin' oh Dots to pharmaceuticals. Wow. wow. They're STEM. It's STEM. It's all STEM. Yeah, yeah, wow. STEM. Stay in school, kids. Oh, wow. man. All right. Uh, also on the yellow team, Michelle makes a, I'm calling this out strictly because it just looked the best to me. Michelle makes a corn crab biscuit yeah. with a Miller High Life hot honey butter drizzle. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, Michelle. Every episode I'm like, I should have drafted Michelle. Well, well, and here's the thing. I feel like it didn't get enough love. I feel like mm. they, they kind of, you know, and I think they genuinely try and be like, here's a positive, here's a negative. And I was like, this is the one that sounds like it fucking tastes great. on a menu it's the first one i would order yeah. hands down yeah and so it was so like it came and they they kind of praised it a little bit and then they started saying something i was like no no this is the one yeah like this is the, like i didn't taste it but i feel like i don't need to i as someone who is a great orderer like if i can oh, oh yeah i i pat myself on the back many <laughs> many a partner I've dated, we go to restaurants, and they're always like, damn, you know how to order. I was like, I know how to just read mm. a menu wow. and know what they can execute. You know what That's I mean? That's a superpower. That yeah. is, that is, because there are, my girlfriend and I argue about this a lot. There are certain restaurants where we like the restaurant, but you can order wrong. Oh, yes. Do you know what I mean? And oh, arguably, yes. one of the marks of a good restaurant is like, you can't order wrong. But there are a lot of restaurants where it's like, there's some duds on the menu. Oh, yeah. And, and I think it all comes down to, you know what what you know their specialty is and kind of like circling around that and like sometimes i feel like there are standout items on a menu that would make you go why do they have this and it's like oh they have this because this the chef knows how to make this like this is like a minor like i know how to make this and i know it really doesn't fit but i'm gonna toss it on the menu yeah, yeah. and yeah. those are usually the sleepers yeah Signature dishes. i know what you mean i i went to a restaurant recently and i saw um Robuchon potatoes on the menu. Yeah. Which is, you wouldn't put it on a menu unless you're like, I know how to make fucking yes. Robuchon potatoes. Because they take forever to make. Oh. They're impossible to get right. Yes. So if you're putting it on a menu, you're like, listen, I'm not fucking around with my yes. potatoes. Here we go. I'm making Robuchon potatoes. All right. Anyway, Michelle's biscuit looks great. Dan A makes a popcorn mousse with clams, which sounds weird, but all the judges are like, it rocks. Yeah. It works. Oh, yeah. And B, his hands are shaking. So we're getting. Yes. The second beat of this narrative, he yes. says it's thirty percent competition, seventy percent Kennedy's disease, which is a really depressing ratio. Sure, yeah. yeah, really tugging at the heartstrings, Dan. Yeah, yeah, but yes, the popcorn dish did look really good. It looked very innovative, and the fact that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's really fascinating that it came out so quickly. That you know, it's very much visually you can see what he's yes. struggling with. So I think that was very powerful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, elsewhere, Manny makes a mole. Thickened with mixed nuts. Mm. And everyone loves it. Everyone says it yeah. still tastes like mixed nuts. They say it's a good mole. Yeah. I really wanted to try that. Yeah. 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 Also sounds good. Because I fucking love a mole. Ooh, mole. Mole, another one of the dishes where usually if the chef is making it, they're like, you know, this takes like yeah. 19 hours to make. And he didn't say a fucking word. He, Manny's not the type, I guess. He's not going to complain. Yeah. I love Manny. Kenny makes basically, <laughs> I described it as a giant chip with sour cream and onion dip on it. Yes. And again, everyone loves it. Yeah. And this is that bounce back I was talking about where I'm like, sure. okay, he kind of stumbled in the quick fire, but mm -hmm. it's really starting to come into his own. And yeah. it got a lot of love. A lot of like, love. Yeah. I feel like he was in the, he, he could have like, yeah, he, this was one of the ones he was in the running for top dish with this dish. Yeah. And I was real hyped. Uh, he did not get it because... Of Rosica's like banger dessert, mustard sabayon on yeah. top of the pretzel cake. Yeah, it was one of those ones where, and this will happen a few times, where like just based off of initial reactions, you're like, "That's who won." Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're like, "Oh, y'all." The way not, they're going, mm, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a winning. <laughs> no. mm. Yeah, you're like, you're not even hiding it. Y'all are like, right. "This is the fucking winner." <laughs> Yeah, they probably uh, tried to edit away from it, but yeah, they're like, yeah, they this try. is yeah, all the can. reaction. You can't but, hide it. Yeah, yeah. They're still like licking their fingers every time they cut back. 
we got another charming Kenny moment when he says he dropped out of culinary school because he forgot to sign oh. up again, which is look so relatable, man. Relatable. It love, yeah. And why would you have to sign up again? That's yeah. a horrible system. Yeah. It should How about just... just default to I'm staying in school yeah, until I'm done, yeah. right? Unless you hear from me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all I'll talk about with the yellow team. Unless you guys have anything. No, no. No. All right, here we go with the red team. In general, seems like a nightmare. Yeah. I'm going to quote Tom here as best as I can. It might be paraphrased, but Tom said, "There seems to be some confusion here. The challenge is to take snacks and turn them into a dish." Not take snacks and turn them into snacks. Yeah. <laughs> brutal. Which is so brutal. Yeah, Tom, yeah. really, I feel like, I don't know if it's this episode or this season or like, I guess maybe the last couple of years, but Tom feels so fucking over it, man. Oh, yeah. He is tired right. of this he shit. Right, he saw Padma leave and he's like, what? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get yeah, on that boat. That, that's who was holding him back. <laughs> yeah. Padma now he can really yeah, just yeah. let me <laughs> <his laughs> right, fuck right. all you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, Make uh, me something good. Yes. So we open up with Kevin's salty, salty olive dish, oh boy. which I think contributes to Tom's like, this is just snacks kind of yeah. thing. Uh, eventually, course four, we get to Valentine's beer and corn soup, which everyone remarks, is it soup or is it sauce? Which yeah. is really hard criticism to hear. I know. Sure. And it's a bummer because it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. I and love then, a corn soup. Yeah. Yeah. And and it seems like he didn't nail the toasted aspect too, which is like Which, by strikes. the way, I want to bring this up. <laughs> I'm not crazy. They're talking about corn nuts, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. It drove me. They kept saying like toasted, toasted corn kernels. And I'm like, yeah. that's corn nuts, right? Oh, yeah. That's I what I was like I feel like, like they imagining. didn't have the rights for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like yeah. when they say like chocolate hazelnut spread yeah. or like a sandwich cookie. It's like, yeah. I right. feel like if you're Nutella or Oreo or corn nuts, you got to just let them fucking say the thing. People oh, are yeah. scared. I, I was in the market and I in the spam section, canned ham. Canned ham. Canned ham. Canned ham. What is canned ham. ham? Yeah. It's spam. It's spam. Get out of here. Anyway, so Valentine didn't nail his soup, which is a bummer. The red team opts to do two desserts, mm -hmm. or more accurately, a pre-dessert and a dessert. Yeah. Which already see. I mean, look, anyone who's ever watched a show is like, oh, I wouldn't do that if I did. Yeah. <laughs> that feels kind of risky. Uh, before it hits the table, everyone's like, we hate palate cleansers. Yeah. They're fighting against Amanda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Amanda comes out and actually manages to deliver. Which is what really hurt the most, because I feel like... <laughs> Amanda had a top dish that was mired by a bad team. Yep. Like, yeah. Like a, a bad team performance. Because Gail even said, Gail is like, this is better than most of the other dishes yes. in this dinner. Yeah. And I think that that, that would have been a top dish if she was on a yellow team. Absolutely. And like, that's what really hurts is when you see those moments where you're like, Ooh, that's a contender that doesn't get to contend because mm -hmm. you're standing over there watching them get praised, which we talked about in the draft episode. The thing about team challenges is you can really get sandbagged by yes. bad teammates. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or hide behind good teammates. That's yeah. true. Also um, true. I will say too about another Amanda thing. She she also had cooked with hops right in the quick fire. That's true. Before, yes. And the she only other the person. Funny, yeah. She had that funny thing where she was like, and it smelled like weed when I was. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was, was like, oh, this girl is Look, very she funny. She plays D and D. She's a nerd. Yeah. Yes. Smokes weed, obviously. Yeah. She's got Amanda, hobbies. if you want to come on the pod, Please. this is an open invite. <laughs> or if you are like, I don't want to get on the microphone, but I do want to hang out. We'll also just yeah. hang Listen. out with you. Yeah. Also, you can join my D and D table. Uh, <laughs> like, I I do have a rotating chair. If you want to come play, the the, the offers well, extended to no, y'all okay, as well. I was going to say we. Yeah, yeah, I'm not leaving. Oh, hang on, Amanda. First, uh, it'll be great because it's on Wednesday, so we'll play D and D, and then we'll and watch. Then we'll come, the, yeah, 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 and then. But yeah, so just here's now, my serious thing as a side track. I can edit this out. I don't care. No, no, we can side track. <laughs> I've always wanted to play D and D, and I've tried a couple times. Here's my problem: all the fucking math. The first, mm. the first thing that happens when yeah. you sit down, you're like. I want to play D and D. They hand you. A, have you ever played? No. Here's the first thing that happens. Oh, gotta have you over. They hand you a worksheet <laughs> and they and a pencil, and they're like, "All right, time to write down numbers." And I'm like, "You've already fucking lost me. I yeah. don't want to do wow. this." Yeah. Okay. Well, That's luckily tough. with things like D and D Beyond, all the math has been pre-math. Be, yeah, pre-math. Yeah. It can be computed for you. Okay. Also, I can tell you tell you a class that has the least amount of math you can be something that hits something like a barbarian and all you got to do is just roll to hit okay and there's not that much math i can barbarian yeah. it all right one of the greatest movies of 2020 yeah. oh yeah, Two, yeah. Three. very scary yeah. very i love scary. that movie anyway that was my D, &D side side That's quest tough. if yeah, you will yeah, yeah side yeah. quest okay uh, before we go to judges' table in this challenge, Dan opens up to the group in the stir room uh, about his diagnosis, and everyone loves him. Yeah, very endearing. Nice payoff. Mm -hmm. Third beat of this emotional arc. 
very very brave of him to open up about it too oh, yeah. so early yeah. i know there was um this this is a past season of top chef there was a chef who i don't remember his name and i won't call him out exactly but he had lost his uh smell and taste because oh of that's right COVID. Yeah. yeah yeah this was like recent. Uh, jackson oh, cow oh yes yes, yes, yeah, yes yeah yes who um i've actually been to his restaurant in venice delicious but yeah. um you know, he, he didn't tell anybody for like the whole season. And like to, to his credit, it's like, sure, I guess, you know, people might want to pick partners or pick team members. Sure, and yeah. so you don't want to get left out just because they think, oh, this guy can't smell or taste. So, you know, there's definitely uh, your health is your privacy. Yeah, but also uh, th- yeah. that is a very important element to cook. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I would argue yeah. one of the most yeah. important. I don't know how he yeah made it so far yeah. in the competition, but. You're just going off the top of the dough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks Instincts. pretty yummy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we get to judges table and the yellow team wins. Uh, so I, for point purposes, I'm going to say the judges table, the top three is just all the yellow team. They okay. all get that point. And the main winner is Rasika. Rasika yes. wins with her, with her little pretzel barley cake. Looks delicious. Sounds weird, but it works. Yeah. On the bottom. And again, here we go. Rough, bad time to be iffy waddy way. Yeah. On the bottom, we got Kevin mm. and Tom says, is that the best thing you can do with olives? Which again is Oof. fucking brutal. Yeah. Wow, yeah, Tom. you can see the Tom's pain. pulling no punches. No punches. Yeah. We also got Charlie on the bottom, whose dish was both under seasoned and also undercooked. Right. One person got mackerel that was almost raw. Yeah. So Charlie all in trouble, and then we've got Valentine. Yeah. Valentine on the bottom one more time. Uh, I do want to say this is a moment for Kristen to be relatable. She uh, after they had walked away, she was like. You guys ever made that mistake of making yes. mashed potatoes in the blender? Because I have, and I'm like, a, that's relatable, and b, now I know exactly what Valentine's soup tasted like. Yeah. That's good hosting. Interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it's so funny that you clocked Tactile. that because that is something I turned to him and I was like, oh, that makes you know, I like that. Kristen did that to be like, hey, you know, we I get all it. make that mistake. We've yeah. all been there. Oh my god, but, yeah, that's what uh, she unfortunately it was a fatal mistake. A fatal mistake because it ends up sending Valentine. Home. I was almost like I was pretty sure it was going to be Charlie because usually if something's undercooked, that's that's the that's a hard kiss line. of death. Yeah, but um, M was saying that she thinks that because it was edible, like like because you could have raw fish, sure. it wasn't like. It's criminal. not like raw chicken. Exactly. Right, right. Where it's like, oh, you can kill somebody. Right. Where this one is yeah. like, no, you, you, you're you still good to go. People eat that raw and maybe it was just the one, you know, not yeah. across the board. Who knows? Right. And so, I'll, no, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. Then. Okay. So Valentine goes home, which brings us <gasps> to our marquee topic for today, which is Last Chance Kitchen. Yes. Because we get to Last Chance Kitchen and we learn two things. One, there is a 16th contestant this season Shocking. yeah sue on from chicago who now has to win five challenges to make it into the main competition the second thing we learn or rather don't learn david murphy nowhere to be seen Shocking. where yeah. the hell Shocking. is david murphy this was, yeah. I, so I think he got clipped i think he went straight home and i think that's why they had the competition aspect for the first one so that oh. they can save. okay i believe really? it but riddle me this batman Ooh. why did he go home because he he lost. Like they were oh. like, that's not good. He, I I feel like something happened. That's how I feel. I mean, oh. I, something you know, capital H happened. Because I, th- I think you know they're already investing in the guy being in the main competition. Yep. They told his backstory. Yep. Yeah. I just don't think that it would be a production side thing where they'd say, oh, actually, we're just going to bring in someone you haven't met. Bingo. Um, so I'm wondering, did he opt out? Is that even allowed? Or did yeah something more emergency happened in his life where he couldn't film you know i i they didn't say i mean i i don't know and oh. i i'm not throwing around baseless accusations but it smacks a bit of um when gabe won and then immediately got canceled like in real life and this then the true. show was like we're just gonna distance ourselves from this the we they sorry, didn't we even didn't. talk about it yeah, right yeah, yeah. okay because here's the thing it is not unprecedented in reality tv or even on this show yeah. to be like so and so had to go home yeah. For a family emergency. Oh, yeah. Oh. But they didn't even... It was radio silence. They didn't talk about it at all. Right. And I also... I dug around on Instagram. On the official Top Chef Instagram, in the post where they're like, we're going to tag all of our chefs for this season, David Murphy is not tagged. Ooh. Uh-oh. And if you look Scandalous. at his Instagram, it's radio silence. He hasn't posted since he went to Japan earlier this month. There's no talking oh. about the I'm gonna season. Be on it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I could see that being like, I got out first. I'm not proud of that. I'm not going to promote, you know, but 
Yeah, I mean, the Top Chef not tagging. That's pretty scandalous. I think I think something capital B bad happened. Okay, well. well and I would love to be proven wrong. I would love yeah, to hear sure. anything to the opposite. Yeah. Are you Googling gotta, it? Because I tried to Google it. It doesn't yeah. work. All right. Nothing well. in there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get to the bottom yeah, of this. Yeah, well, well, we'll create a Google alert for yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David yeah. Murphy. Or if you know, if yeah. for some oh, reason yeah. at home you're listening and you're like, oh, I know David I know Murphy. He told me the story. Yeah. DM Let us. Let us know. Let us know. You have to know. You will stay anonymous. You won't regret it. Yeah. So David Murphy is mysteriously out, but we got Sue on in. And the challenge in Last Chance Kitchen is to use these elevated ingredients to make a comfort food dish. That pairs with beer. Valentine opts to make a New England lobster bake. Mm-hmm. And Sue makes fish and chips with lobster, champagne in the batter, and caviar on top of his tartar sauce. He's really not fucking around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have a spicy take about this. Here though. we go. Okay. Because, you know, the, the challenge was to make fancy ingredients regular. Yeah. yeah. To make fancy things Regular, and I feel like Valentine did that better than Suan. I feel like Suan made a regular dish fancy. That's right. okay. I feel like I feel like those are two very different things. I know what you mean. Yes. But what other fanciness did uh, Valentine do other than using a lobster? Exactly. But he made a lobster like a very regular dish, which I think was the assignment. Whereas it like where it felt like Suan made the the fanciest version of fish and chips, which I think is a completely different. I think that was mm. what the elimination challenge was interesting i kind of see what you're saying yeah, like yeah. i i think um, i'm a magic the gathering player and i'm looking at the rules and i think tom <laughs> you fucked up i think you fucked up <laughs> yeah, i think don't yeah. make rules hmm. lightly don't say uh, we're gonna take fancy things People? and make them regular because if i take if i get one of my tts from louisiana and had them choose between those two dishes they're not picking that fish and chips because they're like whoa this is too fancy okay, okay. and that's my whoa. you know louisiana and aunt accent <laughs> The entire I, state yeah. of Louisiana is up in yeah. arms over that accent. Yeah, and I and I don't need y'all to agree with me because M didn't agree with me either. <laughs> but I'm I'm gonna die on the hill that I think Valentine did the followed the direction of the challenge better than mm. Suan did. But I also think that they're trying to push a narrative here. I, I think, think they so want. Too. I would I think, think so they too. want Suan to go the Christian Kish route since this is oh, her first season. Yeah. Yeah. And so I that? think. And so this is so M was like I feel like they would never do like a producer thing and i was like i don't think so either but i think we know that all these dishes are good they they've spent hours sometimes Mm -hmm. you know um trying to decide what's the best or what's the worst dish so i think that if it is close you're gonna lean towards the better story yeah i know what you mean yeah we kind of talk go ahead Oh, well, I was thinking, but then for me, I'd be like, I'd go with Valentine in that because because the audience already knows him, right. you know, from yeah. the main competition. That this one, some people don't have Bravo. Well, I guess it's on Peacock now, but yeah. you know, Last Chance Kitchen. You know, this guy's really coming in. Who is he? We well, haven't seen him in that well, original exactly. lineup. But but I would say, I, I see what you mean about the elevated thing. I do think the fish and chi- like, I think frying the lobster into a fish fry yeah, yeah, yeah. was good. But then when he pivoted maybe with the um, with tartar the, sauce or also, oh. but, but also I'm kind of like, is caviar just so elevated to us, like connotation wise that like we're I will like not hey, let you put our, it in anything? I will not let our indoctrination to LA <laughs> make us pretend like caviar isn't fancy. It's very well, no, fancy. Well no it is fancy but oh, yeah, so yeah. is lobster. So yeah. what I'm saying yeah, is they sure. were supposed to use fancy ingredients yeah. and yeah. put it into something lower so is putting caviar into a tartar sauce doing the right thing? I think so and that was mm-hmm. his like Afterthought, he would, like did the whole dish, and then he made tartar sauce. And like, I, I've got two extra seconds. I'm gonna yeah. put caviar on top mm-hmm. of this, and it worked. Right. So I'm wondering, yeah. So so, and if we take them individually, I'm kind of like, I mean, you know, where does ingredients end and re- yeah. and then dish begin? Right. Right. But I think I can see it both ways a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It was certainly a tough call, and mm-hmm. I don't um, envy. Tom for having to make the decision for everyone. Seemed yeah. tough for him too. Yeah. It seemed like he was like, "These are both good," you know. Yeah. Oh like yeah, and he, mm-hmm. and it seems like he almost picked it on a technicality. He was like, "Your corn still tasted saucy," and I was right, like, right. "All right." I feel All like right. anytime um, uh, a contestant gets out on a particular technique or ingredient, gets last chance kitchen, and then like 
is like, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I'm going to make tough. you like it. It that's never really nuts. works out. Yeah. You it just is run away. Emotional. Yeah. 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 I think like, especially it's, it kind of reminded me of like when it, <laughs> if, if like your child is, has like a scary moment in the pool, you're supposed to like put them back in the pool. Is that? Oh, I, I think. What so you're so supposed to do? Because you're not, you don't, so you don't want them to be scared of water their whole life and then they never learn how to swim, for instance. Okay. okay. So you kind of are supposed to like kind of, <laughs> basically you know immerse immerse them back in to be like it's fine you're fine look you're back in the water water's good oh. um so i feel like that's what's going on sure. sometimes with last night they're like corn's okay it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Corn's, corn's, corn's your friends corn, we you love still corn. gotta love corn yeah that makes so, sense okay all right didn't work in this scenario though well <laughs> sue ends up winning makes it through last chance kitchen the vibes i get from sue are like the green ranger does that make sense to you guys is this making yeah. sense <laughs> what, what is it good <laughs> Refresh my memory like, on the Green Ranger. There are five Power Rangers, then oh, there's actually a sixth oh, evil yeah. Power Ranger. He's like but then in a few episodes, he's not even evil anymore, and he's actually becomes like everyone's favorite Power yeah. Ranger. Oh, it's just like one episode. He's like the villain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. He definitely like you know they ha- they said he just got married. You know, so he you know maybe he'll be talking story. about his yeah. new new yeah. wife. You know, so yeah, there's some good things there. I think. Uh, Good, good looking man that always helps you uh, know we love a handsome yeah. guy yeah. Love uh, you're talking to the guy who drafted Manny on TV yeah, yeah. love yeah, yeah. a handsome guy I'm talking yeah. yeah I'm preaching to the choir over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, okay so that brings us to the end here's where we as a league have to make some decisions okay because we, we basically have a free agent now right yes but we also have a player who's been injured or sidelined yes. or removed from the league so here is what I think the smartest and easiest thing to do is is that the person who had David Murphy, which is you, gets Sue Regrettably, on. Regrettably, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just get Sue on. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think that would have to be approved by everyone else in the league, which is you and me, Iffy. Yeah. Because it's that's the easiest thing to do. It's not necessarily the fairest thing to do. Because if all things were starting equal at the beginning of the draft and Sue on were always there, we might have wanted Sue on. Yeah. So I think you sort of get like, you get Sue on by default. We have to approve it, and if either of us objects, okay. we would have to initiate some sort of trade. Like, mm-hmm. whoa, hold on, I want Suan, but we'll give you so-and-so instead. Ooh. Interesting. Spicy. Um, Do we agree to the terms? Yeah, I agree to the terms. I think okay. you can have Suan for now. Okay. Yeah. You're just going to straight right. up, just yeah. you feel confident in your picks. Yeah, I'm not going yeah, to trade. I'm not going to rock the boat. Okay. Even though Charlie it, is scary right now, but I don't think I'd be able to trade Charlie right now. Interesting. Okay. I, for drama's sake, want to steal Sue on from you. (gasps) But I really like my chefs. Mm -hmm. Even Savannah, who was my last pick. Yeah. She's really grown on me. She's doing a good job. Yeah, I... She's only had like grand total forty five seconds of screen time. Yeah, but she she hasn't done anything dramatically bad. Yeah, I think you can get reasonably far in the competition by being in the middle. Oh yeah, and in the forty five seconds of screen time she's had, she's made me feel like okay, she she knows what she needs to work on. She's here. She's not fucking around. She's here to compete. So I I think I'm gonna stick with Savannah. All right, and I think you're gonna take Sue on. Yeah. I'm totally happy with that. You know, I mean, look, it runs the risk. He could lose next week. He could. And then you're just out for the count again. But yeah. look, I mean, I am I had David Murphy. I also was like, you know, who mourning, got you mourning points, that. So yeah, who mourning that. Shit. And so it's better than having nobody. And um, yeah, he could fight his way back in. And I, again, he just got married. Maybe he'll say, I miss my wife, my new, my <laughs> yeah, new wife. Yeah, that's point I'll two get, five I'll right there. I'll get a couple, yeah, a couple quarter points maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm totally happy with that. It was, it was a fun surprise. I really was expecting, you know, just a classic David Murphy versus Valentine. We all so were. this was very... Real yeah. shocker. Very the tw- exciting. The twists keep coming this season. Yeah. They keep I was coming. like, surely we got everything out of the way in episode one. Here we are. Yeah. Yet another twist. Yet another twist. All right, let's tally up our points. Uh, uh, as a reminder, you can find our scoring rules on Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League if you want to follow along or create your own league. So in this episode, Valentine missed his daughter. That's point two five. The quick fire favorite dishes were Laura, Michelle, and Kevin. That is point five apiece. The quick fire winner was Laura. That's one point. Judges table is the entirety of the yellow team, which again is Alicia, Kenny, Savannah, Dan, Roscoe, Michelle, and Manny. They each get one point. The elimination challenge was won by Rossica. That's two points for her. Uh, last chance kitchen, Sue on gets point five. And that's that's more than David Murphy. Ever yeah, did already pan off. So in this episode, Iffy, you gained two point seven five points. All right, not bad, but you can certainly be doing better. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Your time will come. I get four points this episode. 
Not mm-hmm. bad. Sierra, you gain a whopping five and a half wow. points this time. Because you had the most chefs on the yellow team. Yeah. Ugh, team yellow. Which is huge. So the leaderboard, as of right now, looks like this. I am still in the lead with seven points, but right behind me with six and a half points, Sierra Cato. Oh, my God. Ooh. How are you feeling honor. about it? I'm on your toes, man. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, you know, what's, the, oh, no. I was going to say, there's that great quote from Finding Nemo, which is, are you hungry? Because you're about to eat my bubbles. <laughs> Dust? I thought for sure you were going to say, <laughs> just keep swimming. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't fathom Listen, a world I where you didn't say just keep swimming. I haven't watched it yeah, in a yeah. while. But is that a quote from Finding Nemo? Yeah, um, I, I was yeah going Dory. To say. Um, Dory, when they're racing through the jellyfish, give it a walk. Wow. Give it a rewatch. She says something. Yeah, dust bubbles. One of those two. Yeah. But okay, bubbles would make more sense. Great. Okay, right. I'll look out for your bubbles. If you bring it up the rear with three point two five points, Jesus, total. That, those are no. Those are no points. Those are no points. I need a big. I need a big episode. Which, like I said, Danny is is due for one. Let's let's get a big episode in you the books. You mean Kenny? Oh, get Kenny. Kenny. Ooh. Ooh. Kenny. Yeah, Danny's my guy. And then there's also Manny. Yeah, Kenny. Lots of neat NNY boys. Yeah. Um, look, it, she gained five and a half points this this episode. It yeah. could happen to you next week. You get yeah. a huge, huge leap next episode. Anything is possible in Anything. Top Chef Fantasy League. Uh, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, either on the show Top Chef or on this podcast, Top Chef Fantasy League, you can drop us a line on Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League. Yes. Uh, if you want to do your own Fantasy League, please tag us. We love seeing your team names and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to watch the full unedited episodes, you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, those are the unedited full. Uh, maybe I'll leave in the part where we forgot to hit record and you yeah. just get to see us quietly yapping at each other for 10 minutes. Who knows? Um, thanks again to my co hosts, Sierra Kato and Ify Wadiwe. We'll be back next week on Monday. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Top Chef Fantasy League is hosted and produced by Mike Cabalon, Sierra Kato, and Ify Wadiwe. Our theme song is composed by Dylan Van Auken. Special thanks to Jarvis Johnson. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube at Top Chef Fantasy League.